Hello, everybody. We are running now an Eden webinar on the topic of DigiCulture. Uh, we are using the Zoom platform, and uh, on this platform, as you see, you have the possibility to chat or to ask some questions on the topic of question and answers, which will be answered uh, by the panelists. Uh, please allow me just to say a couple of words about uh, the project. Uh, this is uh, an European project under Erasmus+, Plus, and it has to do with digital competencies for cultural and creative industries. Uh, all the partners are uh, almost present uh, to this meeting, and they will present you the current uh, state of the project and the research uh, topics which we addressed. Please, first of all, let me introduce Diana Andone, which is going to be the fourth uh, speaker uh, in this webinar. She is the director of the e-learning center of the Polytechnica University of Timisoara and also the coordinator of the project. Diana, please. Hello to everybody. So uh, nice to see all of you now here. I just need to start also my uh, my screen share. I'm Diana Andona, as Rad already uh, mentioned me. And uh, hold on just one second. So, because I need to play also video. Perfect. So we are now here at the Eden webinar discussing about the DigiCulture project and all the Everybody is present here. So I will start with something about the project, but first of all, something about the background. So what are creative industries? The creative industries are the industries which are creative. We kept having this discussion why only some are considered creative because quite a lot of others are also considered creative. And it's only uh, the image of the, how to say, of how you present the things which is the creative bit. So art, advertising, architecture, culture, design, media, and including ICT and gaming, museums and music, obviously are considered the creative industries. In these creative industries, we consider that we need to prepare what we call them creative creators, are those which are able to use all the available tools at this moment to create knowledge, to create beauty, to create uh, uh, a well-being of the society and of the human beings, what we call it usually the creative creators. Recently, in January 2019 and 2020 also, the World Economic Forum has presented what are the future of the jobs. I made here a parallel between the top skills in 2005, so 15 years ago, with the top 10 skills in 2020. And I made a comparison. So you could can see that, for example, quality control and active listening have completely dropped out of the top 10 skills from the 2020. And quite a lot of others have been raised and, and came, uh, came up. The first always will stay complex problem solving. And creativity is the main character and the main skill which allow us to create a problem uh, to find a solution to a complex problem. But not only that, but also the digital skills, what we call it the digital literacy or the ICT proficiency, proficiency uh, can help us to create a better image or a better solution to an existing problem. Here, the GISC, uh, the association from United Kingdom has created what it's called the ICT proficiency, especially regarding students and, and the youngsters. And in this case, you can see that digital creation, innovation and scholarship, communication, collaboration and participation, as well as information data and media literacy are all together in what is called the digital identity and the well-being. Also, GISC has defined what is digital literacy and all of these eight uh, characteristics have been introduced in our project and are at the basis of our project development and the course development which we are doing in our project. Steve Wheeler has created again other nine ideas about the digital literacy and he is the first one who is introducing quite strongly two ideas which is one is maintaining privacy 
who has now become even more important and more relevant, and also managing digital identity. So you have your digital persona, which you are, need to be aware how it is, how it's projected online or on web or in other uh, digital interfaces, and how you can manage that properly. So all of these recently, um, the European Commission have described them as digital competencies. In July 2019, they released the DigiComp 2.1, so the fourth, in fact, version of the digital competence framework, and here is the link, and also my colleagues will be able to put you this link into the chat or anywhere else, and you will be able to collect the link. They refer to major competencies, which are information, communication, content creation, safety, and problem solving. They have created this image of a swimming man who swims in the digital world and in the digital sea of knowledge and information where you need to know from the first level to the eighth level of an advanced swimmer how to manage the tools how to identify the tools how to protect yourself and how to be able to integrate and solve complex problems with all of the tools which you have at hand this is based on what we call, and including with the European Commission, with the same department which has created also the digital competencies as principles of digital development, where you can see that everything is considering how you develop the digital part of any, any item, of any application, of any course. So these were the core part of what we consider to our, uh, how to say, to our project when we started uh, designing and developing the project. All of this information is part of the Europass CV, so it's official now in European Union, and you need to do it. And also there are some other initiatives in Europe which have created and have had a strong emphasis on the digital skills. One is SELFIE, which is about the schools goes digital, and the other one, which also refers to creativity and culture and museum, is the project MUSA, which is trying to develop digital skills for the museum uh, uh, staff and museum uh, curators. So here you can find some more information about the cultural and creative industries and the links to different projects and programs which the European Commission runs uh, now. Our project Digital Culture is dedicated to improve the digital competencies and also the social inclusion of the adults, especially of the young adults in the creative industries. We have uh, different partners and we have a video which is going to present all the partners. I will not mention them very quickly here. And I just want to mention which, is the, which are the main uh, topics which we are doing in this project. The first one is we are trying to enhance the awareness for the training of the digital skills. Also, together with our colleagues, we run uh, the guidelines for digital competencies for creative industries which we develop through different methods as questionnaire and interviews with the experts. We have developed already a virtual learning hub based on our environment called Unicampus, where we are now de delivering and preparing to deliver the digital skills and social incl inclusion for creative industries courses, which are all going to be translated into the partner's languages and are going to be available online and free. We also introduced the idea of open badges for the creative industries and for the adult uh, education. And we want to raise awareness and to be uh, sure that these open badges have a solid structure for the future and they are sustainable for the creative industries education training and training. And here is
So you managed to see something from what we have done in this one, one year, almost one year and a half, in fact, of, uh, of our project with meetings and with development, including online meetings, which we just had in the last two days. These are the courses which we have developed and they are in the process of being publicly released uh, quite soon, but we will speak about them a tiny bit later. And uh, they are based on our multi-language platform, which is Unicampus, and you are going to be able to register and be able to see the courses. All of them are referring to a basic level training in the topics which we selected uh, to, to develop the courses for the creative industries. They have included into them different open educational resources, quite a lot of best practices from coming from a blend of culture and technology, examples from digital artists and study cases from there. And at the end, when you complete all the activities, you will be awarded the digital culture open badges. And we have another presentation which will present this in detail. So this was me, uh, Diana Andone, coming from Politecnica University of Timisoara. Thank you, Diana, for a very interesting presentation. I think now all the attendees understand what this project is about. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Vlad Mihaescu, a member of the Eden Map Steering Committee from the University Polytechnica of Timisoara. And uh, I want to move on in this webinar and introduce our second speaker, uh, our own uh, Eden Map uh, Chair, Antonella Poce, Associate Professor uh, at University Roma Tre in Rome. Uh, she is a professor in experimental pedagogy and she chairs the Center for Museum Education and Postgraduate Courses. Uh, she has a very large experience in uh, education methodology, uh, creative, critical thinking, and uh, uh, digital aspects in, uh, in the culture. So, Antonella, please uh, let, let us see what you prepared for us today. Okay, so I think Antonella is changing to another device. That's what she's saying. Then uh, I, I will move to, to the next point in our uh, presentation until then. Um, if it's okay with uh, Diana, I will introduce the presentation of Chiara. Yes? Okay. Good. So, our next speaker, unfortunately, couldn't be with us, but she sent a short presentation about uh, their work in the project. So, it's, uh, I'm pleased to introduce Chiara Zuani from University of Graz, uh, where she is a tenure-track assistant professor in digital humanities with a focus on museology. So, without further ado, Diana, if you can uh, please uh, share uh, Chiara's nice presentation for today. Hello, Anni, and I'm leading the Austrian team working on DigiCulture. I am a tenure track assistant professor in digital museology, working in a digital humanities department where we train future digital professionals in the cultural sector. By background, I'm a classicist and an archaeologist and I have a PhD in museology. Uh, when I started my PhD, uh, it was the period in which uh, participatory practices were exploding in museums, uh, and uh, job profiles in the cultural sector were diversifying even more beyond more traditional roles, uh, such as a collection manager or IT specialist, uh, which um, provided for all the digital services in a cultural institution. In museum, social media, gamification, storytelling, and cross-sourcing have become increasingly important keywords and skills that a professional need to know and to be able to demonstrate on its curriculum. Recent reports from the museum sector, for example, have emphasized how training is needed across digitization and data management, but also on-site and online communication. Uh, through digital tools, which could range from uh, mobile apps uh, and virtual reality or augmented reality applications to uh, the development of websites uh, and uh, the communication and interaction with uh, a wider public on social media. In the creative industry, the situation is similar, with professionals uh, who come from uh, um, arts faculties and art school uh, uh, or are creative people with a lot of ideas, but they need uh, to be able to present them online. They need to be able to learn how to sell their work online, how to build the relationship with clients in the digital spheres, and also how to manage it, uh, an increasingly amount of digital data while complying uh, with a complex legal landscape. 
And it is this gap of comprehensive and broad digital competencies uh, that digital culture is set up to successfully address, uh, so to allow cultural industry and organization uh, uh, to develop uh, uh, their digital expertise uh, and skills uh, also in professionals who might already be working uh, in the organization or as a creative uh, uh, um, freelance, uh, but might not be uh, working with digital tools on an everyday basis. And uh, thanks to digital cultures, they will be able to gain a broader understanding of the various possibilities and methods, uh, which in turn uh, will help them uh, to develop further ideas uh, and connection with state of the field application in the digital sector uh, in order to generate more attention for their work and better workflows uh, in uh, developing it. And in this sense, I think DigiCulture uh, is set to have uh, a deep impact uh, on the training of the cultural sector. Okay, so you heard the presentation from uh, our partners in Graz, from Chiara Zwani, and now we will try again to... Uh, Can you hear me now? Yes, I'm yeah, oh, great. Happy. Sorry, so sorry about that. But, you know, I changed device in order to improve the situation and it got worse. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'll try also to share the screen, even if... Uh, I had problems with this device showing the screen. So uh, actually, uh, Diana already gave you uh, 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 the picture where we have been working uh, so far. Um, what we um, actually um, started from was the mismatch from what is uh, uh, the actual need for digital skills in the creative sector uh, and uh, the lack of those skills within uh, the uh, digital uh, within the the, the creative uh, uh, industry sector um, employees uh, landscape uh, so we have been we have been working on can you go on please to the to the following one, uh, so we focused on on uh, the framework, uh, the Digicomp 2.1, and we focused on which are the five main dimensions on which uh, um, develop guidelines, some guidelines to uh, inform and work. Uh, with our um, stakeholders. Uh, information and digital literacy, digital communication and collaboration, digital content creation, digital safety, and digital problem solving. So these are the main areas where we wanted to focus our research and to uh, devise um, our uh, courses, the courses that already Diana uh, mentioned. Uh, please, the next one. So uh, after uh, having uh, uh, reflected on uh, a systematic uh, literature review, uh, we carried out some quantitative uh, uh, surveys and interviews uh, in order to understand which were the needs on which we could uh, have worked on. Uh, please, the next one. Here you have uh, a, a, a table where you can see the courses that have been devised according to the dimension taken into consideration, in this case, information and data uh, literacy, and the syllabus that we uh, devised. Um, together with a reflection on the data that we collected after our surveys and more qualitative uh, uh, analysis. What we understood is that there's a, a huge need to adopt a critical approach in the use of digital uh, technologies. That was our stakeholders uh, um, uh, mentioned and underlined. Please, the next one. And if we go to uh, digital communication and uh, collaboration, again, we um, 
could work on uh, the concept that in 10 years, uh, um, stakeholders think uh, that digital uh, skills would be more and more important. According to this, uh, as you can see, there are uh, three different courses uh, um, focusing on digital audiences, uh, social media for culture, digital communication and presentation, and uh, that there are specific tools that we can use in order to uh, develop, enhance this kind of skill. Please, the next one, try to, to be um, uh, uh, quick. Uh, digital content creation, again, another uh, dimension which is uh, absolutely uh, vital for those employed in the creative industry sector. Um, what uh, should be used in order to create digital content. Uh, photography, music, and social media. Again, social media, as you can see, is a real uh, hot topic where um, lots of, of, of uh, uh, people really need to be uh, acquainted and um, supported. Um, again, courses regarding digital content and publishing, digital storytelling, augmented reality, uh, augmented and virtual reality, online and mobile digital media tools. What came out from our uh, investigation is that actually not so many courses, very few actually, are already available uh, and uh, there's a you know, consistent uh, and uh, uh, re remarkable lack of um, of research within these these areas. Please, the next one. Digital safety again, another very odd topic on which we are going to offer uh, different courses: data protection and open licenses, digital safety, security, and ethics. The time we are living, the time of a pandemic we are living, is really highlighting the need to uh, work on digital safety. Uh, there's a, a, a huge uh, uh, problem there. Uh, which relates different kind of subjects, different kind of, of uh, ages, uh, but we need to work on this. And data protection related skills and behaviors are still not at the center of professional uh, practices. So again, there's a need that we are trying to cover with our courses. The, the next one, please. Sorry about that. Digital problem solving. Related to this uh, uh, dimension, we have uh, uh, two different courses and the syllabus is there, mobile apps and mobile user experience, digital management uh, uh, in culture. Um, this was considered important by 51% of respondents. And as you can see from this, uh, um, from this slide, only one of the stakeholders that we interviewed attended a digital management in culture online course. So uh, I can say that uh, what is our uh, attempt, our attempt is trying to cover uh, really all the dimensions from different perspectives. Uh, please, the, the next one. Uh, in this table, you can see how we managed in combining the different dimensions, group of or groups of the digital tools that could be um, should be developed within each dimension, and some examples of the tools to be used and to to be taught about. Uh, so, um, uh, as you can gain from this brief presentation, the attempt was, yes, to start from uh, a research inquiry, uh, but to uh, get to a practical, a practical uh, and manageable uh, uh, handbook or, or guidelines, as we want to call the, the, the product that we uh, produced that could be used, and if we see the next slide, uh, that could be used to, could be used by every uh, kind of stakeholder. Uh, the results, as you can see, were a, a shared uh, product made uh, by the seven European countries participating 
in uh, in uh, in the project but uh, the the guidelines for digital competencies for creative industries that came out of uh, this uh, first uh, um, part of the project can be used in wider contexts at national and international level of course to design online learning and training paths in the creative industries, but not only, I would say, and uh, each of us can define, evaluate accordingly uh, the online courses that uh, uh, we've been developing in different kind of uh, contexts, specifically for the creative industry sector, of course, but in a very wide and open sense. Thank you so much and sorry for all the inconveniences due to um, the uh, devices at home. <laughs> okay, thanks very much for that, uh, Antonella. Thanks to you. Moving on. I, I'm David Evans from JME Associates, one of the partners in the project. And my role here is to introduce uh, my colleague, Dr. Mairead Nicola Michel, who's a senior research fellow in the National Institute for Digital Learning at Dublin City University. She's served on various European policy groups in the area of ICT uh, with research interests in ICT for teaching and learning, and she's presented regularly in this area. And Mireille's a partner in the DigiCulture project with particular responsibility for the structure of the MOOC, and she's also created several of the modules. So I'll hand you over now to Mireille for the next presentation. Okay, thank you very much, David. I'm delighted to be here and I'm delighted that uh, Diana, of course, have or has organised this. So it's great um, to be open and available to all Eden members. I'm going to share my screen now for the presentation. So if you can bear with me. Yeah, as David said, I'm an associate professor in Dublin City University. I'm head of the Ideas Lab, which is a lab specific, specifically um, founded to investigate, innovate, and to implement digital uh, innovation and solutions across my university. It's part of the National Institute of Digital Learning, and we have a number of people from the National Institute of Digital Learning which are really involved in the DigiCulture project, from Professor Mark Brown to Katrina nicola v um, and to Elaine Byrne. So I'm delighted on behalf of our team to be here to present to you today. I suppose one of the reasons that we're particularly happy to be involved is that DCU has, for a number of years, been um, developing uh, massive open online courses and we have a particular interest in the Irish language and Irish language culture. And one of the courses that we have is Irish 101, which is a massive course which we deliver quite a few times during the year for the last number of years. And it's been amazing the response that we have got to got from this. So the cultural aspect has been really, really strong. So I've left details there for anybody who's interested in Irish language and culture that they be able to partake in this course into the future. But with respect to um, with respect to how we design this course, I think there. Um, I think just to, or I'm just hopping between screens here. Uh, we have 13 courses that we have developed out, um, and as uh, Antonella had said, these courses are derived from all the state of the art literature that review that we did. But also, I think more importantly, their content and um, shape of them has come from the engagement that we had with representatives from our survey data. So we were able to use a lot of that survey data in the design and development of the courses, which was really, really important. So learners or prospective learners have been involved in the design process from the start. So that's been a really useful process as we've, we've come to develop these courses. And as you can see, as with any of any design process with regards to, we believe in a very agile and iterative approach. And this is really particularly because we come from different areas and different contexts and the creative and cultural sectors in each one of our own individual lands is quite different in some respects. And there's different needs and requirements from those that are engaged in them. So that's been really, really useful. And that's why the survey and the intellectual outputs have really, really fed into this, into the design process and the learner experience as well. One of the key things that we've tried to do, do with this is be very, very representative as well. And that's why one of the features that um, 
Diana alluded to before was the case studies. And I think we, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but one of the, a little bit more, and I think that's been thing so that the learner has a really, really strong voice and they can identify with um, people who are already engaged in their industry using some of the tools and some of the know-how that, we, we're, that we're trying to bring to learners in these, these courses. I think a really, really important design feature that we've tried to engage with is that we have a consistency in design in the structure and the approach. As you can imagine, with 13 courses being developed out by different individual partners, and even though they are in tandem, we could all go down very, very distinct routes. But what we've designed is a framework by which we can have a consistent approach in structure and in, so to maximize and to, I suppose, develop the, the user, the end user experience. So from the beginning, we decided we gave ourselves sort of initial frame by which to work. So that we were dedicated, at, that we were particularly focused at beginners, that each course would last to four to six hours, that there would be a range of task type of activities that they could engage in, that we were to design with the knowledge that we would possibly have two or more modes of delivery, whether that's fully, both including fully online um, or other synchronous methods, where we had we had also had to um, engage in questions about the evaluation and assessment methods and tools. And this is really, really important. And I think Diana mentioned it earlier on, that the digital badges that we want to give out, we want to make sure that there's substance with them, that those who gain them and gather them will have, know and be able to show and validate the learning that they have done and achieved within our courses. And also then to provide these courses into the various national languages of the project. So as part of this iterative design, we'll have a pilot delivery process and we will learn and refine again as soon as we have concrete learner data from those who've engaged with the courses from the start. So we have a range of activities and tasks and one of the important notions or important concepts of learning that we decided from the start was that we would put fence, we would put um, an emphasis on application, learner application and know-how. So not just also give not but uh, not just domain knowledge, but by giving them actually application knowledge. Because from our from our research, we they want to know how to do things and how they can be done, and to give examples on that. Another important feature, and this is true of all courses, is that they will be interactive. So we've looked at methods and means and technologies as a way we can do that. And I think our notion of keeping it simple has been really, really keeping simple but engaged has been really, really important. Also, an important aspect of this is that we know that some learners will want to do particular courses of out of the 13, and there are others that will want to do all of the 13. So really, like, as in, you know, these are sort of micro-credentials, they should be stackable, they should be able to be put together and used and together, but they also should stand alone. So we've would, we would designed the courses with that also in mind. So that's really, really important um, design feature for us. Also, there's no point, and um, we're all, I think every member of the um, partnership is very, very um, supportive of open educational resources and practices. And there is no point of us redoing the wheel, uh, so to speak. So where we can, we've included existing um, OERs into the design, into each of the courses. And where we have, where we've been trying to get through new concepts or deliver new know-how, we've developed bespoke and accessible OERs. And again, just to talk about the end user case studies, I think they're really, really important because they provide tangible use cases for our learners with their own peer groups and from other countries. And I think that's really, really important because it also gives the cultural and national context that we're, we're trying to deliver to. This is one example of one of our courses, Digital Safety, Security and Ethics. We've gone for a very simple look and feel about how these are to be developed. And really because what we wanted to do with this is to make sure that learners, that it was really intuitive for learners as they navigate through the courses. So from where we have thing, we have given the principal topic areas and then they can dive down into them. So again, dependent on a user's experience with digital so that they were able to move through the courses in a very easy and um, easy and way. This is an example of one of the OERs that we've used called the ethicscanvas.org. 
Um, and we've integrated that very well um, into, we've integrated that into this course as well. So I think really for us, and we've highlighted where we've used all the different and various OERs. And I think, again, so that we're reusing and taking that sustainability notion is that where we can, we've looked at OERs from outside and we validated them and we review them for their quality and for their existence into the long term so that it will be sustainable. Assessment is really, really important for us. And this is really because we want to have the badges that we produce to have some value and meaning for those who obtain them. So we have both formative and summative assessment strategies within each of the courses. So we're moving beyond this notion of certificates of completion where you click through activities and therefore that's considered that you've achieved that you've achieved a specific that you've achieved whatever uh, competence in that area so we're look we've we've a little we have a little bit of more a nuanced approach where potentially in one of our courses or many of our courses you would have to do specific activities before that you that which will contribute to your final um, exam as well so we're being very we're trying to be a little bit nuanced about our assessment strategies and make it a little bit um, I think I think more a little bit more credibility towards it, not just saying that you participated for X number of hours, but giving it a little bit more activity and engagement, and I suppose it, um, autonomy for the uh, learner, so that they really have proved that they have engaged with this course. And then from our from our notion, and I know that you'll hear from my colleague Hendrik now about the tro about the direction that we have taken for badging and how this will look, and how and how we've also we've also tried to derive from. Um, clear and consistent approach to badging so that again it will be reusable and it will uh, and that it will adhere to open educational practices and principles so I think that's all from me um, except that we would, would invite you to learn with us you have our website you can follow us on Twitter and if anybody would like to contact me further to talk about the courses or to what we are doing in DigiCulture please do and I know I've been speaking very quickly but I've only had five minutes so it's trying to get it through as quick as possible thank you very much Thank you, Mairead. Um, and as Mairead said, uh, our next presenter is uh, Hendrik Nock uh, from the University of Aalborg in Denmark, Associate Professor in the Department of Architecture, Design and Media. Uh, Hendrik's been working on interaction design and user experience for many years, including things like game metrics and psychological data and eye tracking. And in DigiCulture, um, Hendrik and Aalborg are specifically responsible for the badges so I'll hand you over now to Hendrik to explain all about this. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Hendrik Knoche. I'm from the Media Technology Department from Auburn University in Denmark. And I will tell you about how we're using badges in the DigiCulture uh, project in our MOOCs. Let me tell you a little bit about how uh, badges uh, are used. So we have badges are micro credentials that people can use to display their, um, their capabilities. And I will walk you through the different ways of how you can do that. So how we as a, as a um, learning provider issue these badges, how students earn them, how they can then later display them and how other people that might want to employ or verify that the students actually have the skills that they claim they have through this badge can actually verify that that is the case. So typically, badges uh, serve as micro-credentials, so they are not as big as, uh, as uh, full uh, certificates for a, for a major uh, education, but for smaller units. So we issue these through our digital learning environments to a learner. And so we set them up uh, before and we can connect them, of course, to uh, competence frameworks uh, and so forth. So let me show you what, what happens here for the student, actually. So when a student goes to, a, to their MOOC and they can find out basically that a, a badge exists and that they need to complete uh, a number of activities. I have only just uh, chosen one here, but this could be tied to a number of um, activities that they need to complete in order to qualify for the badge and their students can find out uh, which uh, requisites or prerequisites there are for um, owning uh, a badge. The students can also um, attach evidence so uh, to um, their, their um, request for, 
earning a badge. So, uh, for example, it's not just that they maybe uh, run through and uh, complete uh, exams uh, to uh, qualify for getting badge, but they can attach evidence that is a, a visual or audiovisual proof of um, them having a certain skill that the badge is associated with. So they could, for example, show uh, uh, how they created a, a pretty uh, installation um, with, uh, with a digital tool. And after they have been awarded a badge, the students can then go and download the badge. And then there are a number of uh, things, of, of details attached to the badge. So what, what know the name, what, what kind of course this might relate to that they have chosen, and how they can, uh, you know, what kind of criteria they had to fulfill, actually. And this is stored at, at, the, at, the, at our side from, from us at the, at the DigiCulture um, project, so that we can actually look up and other people can look this up later. Then the badge might uh, expire at a certain point, and then you can look up the evidence. So let's say the student uh, downloads this badge. They can connect it to what is called a backpack, uh, which is a nice metaphor from the, the backpacks that people used to walk around with and had all these badges from the, uh, the uh, countries that they visited. So everybody can uh, see uh, which uh, places they visited. So in this case, they can see what kind of skills they have. So let's go to uh, one of those uh, backpacks that, uh, so one, uh, backpack uh, provider, so to speak, is Badger. So in Badger, you can display your badges. So what we do is from, from our uh, learning environment, from Moodle, the students, they earn the badge and then they can upload it to Badger and they can, uh, people can see it from there, but they can of course share all of this information on uh, social media, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, and so forth. And this being a digital, uh, solution has, of course, the, the nice advantage that uh, now anybody who sees uh, this badge that uh, this uh, person has been awarded, that they can go back now and verify and see the evidence, um, unlike with uh, paper certificates, you know, where you basically just see a pretty um, uh, uh, printout or, or a, with a nice stamp and seal. Here, you can actually see and verify what actually was the, the ground or the, the reasons why this badge was awarded. So this gives uh, a nice transparency for potential employers to verify what uh, their potential candidates can actually do. And so makes the whole process of hiring people for specific skills uh, better for, for both sides, hopefully. Hello everyone, my name is Andre. Uh, yet I'm representing the Triade Foundation and I'm uh, here to talk a little bit about, uh, to comment actually about the need of, uh, of these uh, tools because more than ever, unfortunately, the team didn't expect that uh, these times would come. So more than ever, uh, we actually need digital tools in order to get our lives uh, going. So in this, uh, in this respect, uh, I feel that um, Especially in the cultural dimension, people tend to be very practical, very, very, very technical, but not very digital in this in this respect. So uh, I was uh, facing in the gallery or in the foundation always a problem, also with employees and also with people and artists who are not having these basic uh, tools and understanding of the of the digital world in which we are living in. So in these terms, I think it's essential especially for a um, creative person to know how to communicate and how to uh, elaborate an idea in a digital form. From data collection to data creation, all the topics are very important. And I feel that this especially is, uh, is the key of, of these uh, courses. So uh, with no further um, comments to make, I will uh, lead you and we will discover the courses which are proposed by the Digital Culture Platform. 
Yes, uh, thank you very much, Andre, and everybody. It's me back, Diana Andone, and I will uh, like to start about the courses to go a tiny bit over all the courses which we have at this uh, moment uh, ready to be prepared, which are the Internet, World Wide Web, and Introduction to the Digital World, the Digital Content and Publishing, the Data Protection and Open Licensing, Digital Curation and Libraries and Museum about the digital safety, security, and ethics. We are discussing also presenting also digital storytelling, digital audiences, and digital analytics. Also about the social media for culture. We are presenting some tools for augmented and virtual reality, also for mobile apps and the mobile user experience, about the digital management in culture and how to communicate and present digitally, and also how to edit videos digitally. But uh, we have also some videos to present about this, so let's see them. In the DigiCulture project, we are developing 13 online free courses dedicated to adult learners in the creative industries and culture sector, with the main aim to improve their digital skills. The Introduction to the Digital World, Internet and World Wide Web course plans to give participants general knowledge about web, internet, the web to zero, and how to use different technologies to build a creative website. This is based on resources which shows how to use the web and search engines, tutorials on how to work and live digitally. In the course Digital Content and Publishing, we look how the different online media works, wikis and blogs. Different resources and tutorials for how to create newsletters and ebooks are also included. The online and mobile digital media tools course analyzes the different image and video formats and includes tutorials for photo, audio, and video editing. These courses are developed by the team from the Polytechnica University of Timisoara, Romania, and include study cases from European and Romanian digital culture sector. The Center for Museum Studies, based at the University of Roma 3, is one of the Digi Culture project partners. Uh, Uni Roma 3 team is involved in the design and creation of two different Digi Culture courses Digital Storytelling for Creative Industries and Social Media for Culture. In the module Digital Safety, Security and Ethics, we will be exploring the basics of information security and online ethics. We will also be looking at some easy steps individuals and organisations can take to protect their computers and online information. Some of the topics that we will be covering include passwords and password management, spotting phishing emails, setting up a firewall, using VPNs, browser security, ethical dilemmas in the digital world, and much, much more. In the module Digital Audiences and Digital Analytics, we will be exploring how to identify your digital audience and expand it using search engine optimization. We will also explore how you can use digital analytics to assess your online impact. To help us along the way, we will be making use of common resources such as Google Trends, Google Console and Google Analytics. We will also be taking a look at some interesting case studies from the cultural and creative sector in Ireland. We cannot hear you, Diana. I think you want to tell us something. Sorry. Yes, yes. I wanted to say that these are apologies. I wanted to have all the, the sound from the videos very well. So this is why I muted myself. So these are our courses. And uh, we introduced briefly some of them. The others you can find online. If you go on our website, digiculture.eu, where you can find more information about the project, also some of the reports which we produce more information about presentation and papers which we published about this project. And you can also register already for our courses at digiculture.eu slash courses. 
and the courses, some of them will start from 15th of June, some others in 1st of July, and so on. There are 13 courses in English now, and they are going to be in six other languages pretty soon. So this is the website where you can all find the information. And um, this is for me for the moment. Uh, I think, uh, thank you, Diana. I think we have a, a very interesting poll prepared and uh, maybe we can start it and until uh, people answer, we can take some more questions. So you see uh, on your screen, uh, the first question of this poll. So uh, this poll is only for people on uh, the Zoom channel. So people on YouTube, I'm sorry, but uh, you won't be able to, to attend to this poll. Uh, Antonella wanted to answer live uh, one of the questions uh, from our audience. So until people answer this uh, poll, Antonella, could you please share your answer? Sorry. Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I answered the poll, you mean? No, I... The, ah, there's a question for me there. That, that's what, what, yes, yes. Yes, you, you said that you want to answer live about how people can get involved in this project. Ah, yes, yes, yes. In fact, in fact, I was trying hard to answer and I couldn't. And um, yes, of course, they, they can get more information as actually Diana uh, told in, in a recent uh, uh, comment um, uh, connecting to uh, the web the project website uh, and of course uh, uh, I would recommend uh, to enroll to our courses uh, because of course there's uh, um, a specific field uh, highlighted that is that of the creative industry area but uh, as i was saying uh, today in um, being interviewed on on this uh, um, issue of assessment and going online with uh, teaching and learning um, we need more and more culture we need to become critical thinkers and to nourish our our thought we need culture so the creative area, the creative industry, I think is where, um, you know, economy and uh, um, the, 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 the world should really restart after this kind of crisis. So that's why um, this area, and as uh, uh, Andre said before, uh, when the group, the, the consortium group, wrote the project, couldn't imagine what was going on. But actually, more than ever, our project and the work we have been carrying out uh, so far and our courses are really up-to-date, uh, useful, uh, manageable. And as Marired also underlined, we um, created those courses uh, listening to the actual uh, stakeholders, to the people directly involved in, in uh, this area. So we, we are really trying to, to answer uh, their, their needs, to give an actual feedback. So here is the... Yes, here are the results from the, the results. poll. Results. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, as you can the see, digital content. Yeah. Yeah. Digital content and publishing comes mm -hmm. very high on top, followed by digital safety, security, and ethics, and yeah. then obviously about digital communication and presentation and social media for culture, and a tiny bit lay lower about the mobile apps and augmented and virtual reality, and very surprisingly about the digital libraries and digital museum. Maybe it's also about our audience today, which are probably more from the education sector than from the culture sector. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think everybody will find something interesting in our, in our project and in our courses to learn. I myself, even that I'm considered an experienced user, when I was looking at some of the projects, I picked up some quite new and interesting information and, and knowledge. So if you all want to close up or something, well, maybe I should say uh, just a couple of words. Uh, there was a message which has been posted by Diana on the chat. 
So I will just draw you the attention to this message. If you want to discuss more, uh, you can uh, just join us uh, after the end of this session on Twitter, and uh, we can uh, talk more about that. So thank you very much to everybody for uh, attending the meeting. Uh, thank you for the questions which have been asked. And uh, we hope that it was interesting. We also heard something of some similar projects which are developing around Europe, which is a very good thing that maybe we can find some synergies and we can cooperate in the future. Thank you very much to everybody. All the best. Bye bye. Thanks, thanks Thank to you. All of you. Thank bye. you. See you on Twitter chat. See you on the Twitter chat. Bye.